good morning, or wherever you might be, maybe it's afternoon, maybe it's some really early in the morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Diana Clark. I'm sitting in for Gil this morning, just so he can have a day off this morning. And so, for those of you on YouTube, Gil will be back tomorrow at uh, 7 a.m. For those of you on Zoom, you know who I am. (laughs) So, uh, warm welcome, warm welcome. As a little introduction, I um, heard this from Gil some time ago, and I liked this uh, idea that when we're practicing with Anapanasati, when we're practicing with the breath, we might think of it as in the same way that we go for a walk, we might go on a pilgrimage, And we keep walking one step after another. We keep walking whether we are going, whether we are, there's things to notice, there's landscape, there's buildings, there's other people, but because we're on a pilgrimage, we just keep walking doesn't mean that we're not noticing other things, but we keep walking. Maybe sometimes with a little bit more emphasis on noticing the way we're walking, and sometimes the attention shifts a little bit to the way that we are noticing whatever there is to be noticed. So in the same way with Anapanasati practice, that is mindfulness of breathing practice, We stay with the breath, just like we might keep walking. And we might notice things, the landscape of our experience, if you will. But we keep with the breath, we keep noticing. Sometimes it's in the foreground, sometimes it's in the background, but we keep noticing the experience of breathing. And then to take this uh, analogy a little bit further, we might say that when we're walking, we might encounter stray dogs. And some of them are so cute. And we stop and we pet the dog maybe for weeks. We completely forget that we're walking on a pilgrimage. Maybe there are barking dogs that we ignore. They, they, they don't really seem to be a problem. So we don't give them any attention. We just keep walking. Maybe there are some barking dogs that we meet and we open our hand, we show them our hand to show that we're safe, that we're okay. We're safe for them. They don't have to be worried about us. Maybe there are some dogs that come up to us and we clearly say to them, no, go home. So, through all of these different dogs that might visit, we just keep walking. So that's what I'd, Gil offered this initially, and I I kind of like this idea. There might be different experiences that arise, but maybe there's some way that we can just stay with the sensations of breathing. Okay. So, 
Before our guided meditation, just taking alert posture, a posture that expresses our intention to practice, as well as some warmth, some care, kindness. So some uprightness, but that doesn't have some coldness or or hardness to it. And to connect with the experience of breathing. Feeling the breaths. Noticing the quality of the breath. Are they smooth? Are they rough? Maybe the breaths are long. Maybe they're a little more short. Maybe the quality is maybe some deep breaths or maybe they feel a little more shallow. We're just noticing. Feeling the rhythm of the breath. An in breath and then an out breath. then is there a way that we can stretch our awareness, expand our awareness to include the whole physical body? This expanding stretching of the awareness helps us to not get lost into our experience or contracted around something. It might be helpful to imagine sometimes with the exhales, a little bit of blowing up the awareness, just like we might blow up a balloon in a relaxed, easy manner.
having the body be the arena of our attention. Again, nothing in particular needs to be happening. We're being with sensations of the breathing and with the body. Can we offer our attention to different parts of the body? The face, the shoulders, chest, the belly, it might be that bringing our attention to these different areas, allow a certain amount of softening, uh, relaxing, uh, letting go of the tension. Maybe not also We don't have to make it a problem if there's still some tension, some holdings. But is there a way that we can let go of some of the holding patterns in the body? Maybe with the exhale, there's a little bit of release. Very subtle. This relaxing, calming is more associated with allowing, letting go than with any doing. We might check in and see if we're creating any new tension by expectations we might have. We 
can notice any pleasant sensations that are associated with breathing. This can be very subtle. But maybe there's a little feeling of smoothness. Maybe there's a little feeling of letting go with the exhale that has some pleasure with it. Maybe there's some pleasant sensations associated with the just being intimate with our breathing. Maybe there's a feeling of contentment, a vague feeling of okayness. This may not be our dominant experience. It may be just a corner of our experience. Can we tune into this aspect of our experience? Any sense of okayness, contentment, pleasantness? And allow this to be a support. Being settled in the body, feeling the sensations of breathing. We can now turn towards the mental experience. A gentle inquiry, are there any thoughts? a mental activity that takes us away from the present moment experience. And just like we did with the body and with the breath, we can notice the experience of this mental activity rather than trying to make it go away. Perhaps they have a lot of energy associated with them. Or maybe not so much energy with this mental activity. Are the thoughts more discursive, writing novels, so to speak? Or are they very simple, 
descriptive, just a single sentence. Maybe somewhere in between. Just noticing the quality, not so much the content. There might be a sense of constriction or tightness around the breath. I'm sorry, around the breath, but also around the mental activity. Maybe there's a sense of ease, spaciousness, openness. We can feel into that, associated with the thoughts, the mental activity. Is there a tightening or an opening? Maybe there's a sense of pushing or pulling, not liking, liking, this movement of wanting. We can notice that also. Maybe there's a sense of looking for something, searching. How does that feel? What is that experience? Letting the content of the thought take care of itself. More being with the experience. of having these thoughts. Maybe we're identified with the thoughts. This is me, this is mine. No matter which way we are experiencing the thoughts, as we breathe in, as we breathe out, can we Relax, soften these mental activities. Letting the activities of the mind come to rest. Maybe the breaths themselves are, can reassure the mind in some kind of way that the mind doesn't need to be so active. Not getting involved with the thinking, but Trusting the breath.
not all mental activity needs to stop. We're just allowing a calming, a softening of whatever is happening in the mind. We can do this by being aware of mental activity without getting involved, getting tangled up in. All the while, breathing in and breathing out.
staying with the sensations of breathing. Allows the settling of the mind and the body, a calming, so that we aren't pushed around by this mental activities or sensations in the body so that we don't spend all our energy reacting to, responding to, trying to take care of, trying to make different our experience. And instead, we can be with our experience. Sometimes that includes being with others If we have a certain amount of calmness, then we're more apt to really be able to deeply listen to what others are saying to us. Really be present for others as well as for ourselves in a way that perhaps we might be a refuge for others if we're not agitated We're not busy with ourselves. So may our practice be a support for us and for those around us. May all beings find ease and happiness. May all beings No peace.